Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to Exotic Wine Travel. I'm your host, Matt Horky. So we have a very interesting and very rare wine on today's show. And I'm going to give you a little bit of a, of a history how I came up on this wine. So uh, we're in Michigan right now, like getting ready, to, preparing to do our big wine trip in the Balkans. But we were visiting a friend in Atlanta, Georgia, and Shireen, of course, wanted to go to Whole Foods to get some snacks. So I was walking around the wine section, as I always do. Wherever I go, I always look at the wines. Now, Whole, excuse me, Whole Foods is very uh, organized in terms of they do their South American wines, their French wines, their Italian wines, uh, their Spanish wines. Everything's laid out perfectly. But there was a small section, maybe about five or six bottles wide, and it just said, other European wines. That's all it said. And I looked, and most of them were Greek. There were some Retsina wines, some Greek wines, but there was one wine here that I've been dying to try, but I didn't think that I'd be able to get it unless I went to the country. And it's from Hungary. And I think, I think that's why, uh, just like when you're interested in anything in life, be it antiques, that's why people go to a lot of garage sales to look for specific finds, or maybe you're investing in stocks, looking for that magical stock. Anything that you're really into, you do it because once in a while you find the gem. And this is the gem that I found. Um, so I don't know a ton about this wine. I just know a general background. This is the first time I'm going to be trying it. This is the Igervin, uh, Hungarian. I've been to Budapest once. Hungarian was like Martian to me, so maybe I'm just... I'm just really uh, making this language sound crappy, but the Egervin 2013 Bull's Blood, the Egri Bikaver, that translates to bull blood, Bull's Blood, from the town of Eger, or maybe it's Azure, I don't know, Eger, Azure. This is an appellation in Hungary. Hungary actually is uh, way back in the day. The only real two countries for fine wines was France and Germany and you know what Hungary was actually a pretty close third because of their famous dessert wine Tokai um, but they are also making some exciting uh, wines from other areas now the bull's blood this is all I know I know there's 13 grapes allowed in this appellation to be a bull's blood blend you only have to have three some of the more famous ones are Kadarka which is a local variety uh, Kek Francos which is Blau Frankish Merlot, Cabernet Sauvignon, Syrah, Pinot Noir, Zwetgelt, a lot of different grapes there. And to be a bull's blood wine, you only have to have three of those grapes. So I don't even know what the blend is in this wine. I have no idea, but we're going to find out. So one small history before I give this a smell. Uh, the bull's blood, from what I understand, in the 16th or 17th century, when the Turks, the Ottomans, were going to invade Hungary... Uh, the villagers, they just got really drunk basically on local wines so they could be prepared to fight. And either they put bull's blood into the wine or that was the rumor to get them a little more crazy and it scared the Ottomans <laughs> out of the village. So uh, it, it resulted in a victory from the villagers. So that's where this came about. So let, let's pour this, see what it looks like. Another thing, I'm going on and on about this wine, but it's a random episode. And Whole Foods presentation is everything. This was the only wine there where all the labels were beat up. I don't know if you're going to be able to see this. I picked the best label, but you see some of it's here scratched off. Some of it looks a little bit funny. That's why I actually picked this wine. It was $9.99. So this has the potential to be either really bad or surprisingly good. That's what I think. I don't think there's going to be any in between. So... Let me pour this and pour a little bit for Shireen, the camera woman. There you go, baby. So let's take a look at it. First of all, when I see it is a lighter colored wine. Um, it's so funny. It doesn't have a. It doesn't have the more ruby essence of a Pinot Noir. It is quite light though and still with a little bit of a violent tinge let me give this a little bit of a smell now 
Now, from what I understand, Bull's Blood wine actually has a lot of uh, Blaufrankisch in it. I don't smell a lot of the Blaufrankisch. Blaufrankisch usually gives off some spicy notes. I get a lot of raspberry in this, a lot of fruit, light fruits. Shireen, what do you think? Exactly as you mentioned. A lot of raspberry. Yeah, a lot of la raspberry and light fruit. Um, Excuse me, I think it's going to be a more of a fruity wine. I don't pick up any wood. I know there's there's some aging requirements with this appellation. I'm not sure what those aging requirements are. I'm not picking up any wood. Let me give this a little bit of a taste. So <clears throat> what I'm tasting in this, I am getting, when I put it on the palate, I am getting the Blaufrankisch taste. And Blaufrankisch uh, usually gives you some light fruits on the palate, but it also gives you a little bit of spice, a little bit of heat. Uh, it's a grape native to Austria. I get a small characteristic of Pinot Noir, uh, some strawberry in it as well. I pick up no wood. The wine is actually surprisingly pleasant. What, Shereen, what do you think? What, what are you picking up? Um, it's pleasant for the price, but um, the sour front palate is a little. I was a little bit taken aback by the front palate. It is a bit sour. It's. I mean, it's not spectacular wine for nine dollars and ninety nine cents. You could do, uh, you could do a lot worse, especially for an exotic wine. This is imported by the Sazerach Company in New Orleans, Louisiana. So I don't know how readily available this wine is. I could find no information on it. I do like that it has a really. Uh, kind of a crappy <laughs> label, so to speak, after we traveled through Turkey, Georgia, Armenia, because you don't realize how much money goes into design and production of labels. So some smaller vineyards had some real basic labels, so that's kind of what attracted me to this. Um, let me give it one more taste before. The meat palette is lacking. The front and the end are very interesting. The mid palate is very hollow. It's a wine that goes here, takes a little bit of a dip, and then the end palate comes in. It's $9.99, so you can't expect it. I, I'm still, for me, I'm putting this at, for my palate, around 87 points. I still think it's fairly well made. You're, you're not, I mean, you're not going to be unhappy spending $9.99 on this. So, uh, Bull's Blood. If you give it a, if you uh, get a chance to drink it, write in the comment section and see what you think. I don't think that we're going to get too many people trying out Bull's Blood. <laughs> if you like the video, please share it with your friends. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, Exotic Wine Travel, and I will see you at the next episode.